How to use Ninja Forms to make a contact form for WordPress. Hey guys, and in today's video, I'll demonstrate how to create a contact form for WordPress using a Ninja Forms. So there's a brand new install of WordPress. No additional themes or contact have been added. And we will begin by visiting a plugins. We're going to go on add new and search for a Ninja Forms. And I want to point out right now that Ninja Forms is two words. If you just say one word, then you do not get the Forms plugin that you wanted. But two words and you do. We'll set it up, then we'll activate. And then on the left, you'll see the first thing. There is a Ninja Forms option available. If we go to the dashboard, there is an option to make a Ninja Forms better. But I'm just gonna click not now. And now we are presented with the option to add a new form or that they actually provided for us a contact me form. Let's click on that one first. And here we are now here on the page of the forms builder. And for the form that they have provided us, it asks for the name, email, and our message. And these are all required, hence the asterisks. If you go on to the settings here, for each field we can give it a name. And we can set it to make it required or a not. And then if you go to over here on display, we can choose a default value, a description, or a placeholder. The moment I hit done, you can see it changes right away. Now let's add a phone field, if shall we. And you can see over here there are a number of common HTML fields. So you will just drag and drop these blocks onto your form. Also, if you scroll down a bit, you will see here some custom content fields. So, so yeah, a lot of flexibility within your reach. If you go down further, some layout fields and then some miscellaneous fields. And you can even put a star rating on your form. Let's choose a phone and we can put it here on the bottom. And let's drag that boy up here where we want it to go. And then click done. And then we'll choose the phone field and we're going to choose it to make it a required. And we don't want any other display options. So we'll hit a done on that. And here we are. So now let's hit publish. Which actually just saves the form. It doesn't put it on any pages or anything. It just saves it. But now we need to choose what happens when someone fills out this form. This form does four things by default. First is store submission. Next is an email confirmation to the person who filled out our form. Next, an email notification to the system admin. And then lastly, the success message. Right now, I'm just going to turn off the store submission. And we will take a closer look at the email confirmation, but we will probably not change it that much around. It sends to the email field, so whoever the person filled this out. And you probably want to change the submission confirmation and the subject to something related to your services or website or what you're offering in general. So that they know where this email is coming from. And then all fields table sends them all the fields that they have filled out. So we're just going to leave that alone. And moving on to email notification, you will, you will see that it sent to the system administrator. If you wanted to be someone else, you can simply put in an email address. Now for the email messages, right now it includes the message and then there's a name and email. However, I will put the phone number right below it. And I'm going to do it by pressing the curly brace and it pops up this wonderful tool. 
for you to be able to see what your options are and to make things easier for you. And, and then right over here is my phone number. Now it's going to include the phone number. So just click done. And we will take a look at the success message over here. And by default, it's going to be just pretty bland and basic. But I would recommend you put in something more friendly or more welcoming for your website or service. Now let's take a look at the advanced and we can choose display settings. Display form title, clear successfully completed form, and hide successfully completed form. And we're going to click on advanced. And we can even do a whole bunch of like different things with the form fields. Like there's there's a lot of choices available. Let's turn off the display form title. But for the others, we're just going to leave that all alone. Now moving on to restrictions, we can make individual fields to be required to be unique. And if we want, guys, we can require that the end user to be logged in before they can fill out the form. And now we can decide how many messages they're allowed to send within a period of time. Now for a contact form, you most probably only want one, maybe, maybe two, but for now we're just going to leave it as is and you can turn it on later if you want to. So now we just click publish and we're going to click on the X. So moving on, we should now create a page, click on pages and, and there, and we will call it for now, contact us. And we'll put in, please use the form below to contact us. And then right here is the Gutenberg block called Add a Ninja Forms. And we can simply select the form that already exists that we have created. And there's our form, easy and simple as that. And that's pretty much all that is to it. So now we click Publish. And let's take a view of this page. So click view page. And as you can see, everything is looking all good. And if we fill it out and hit submit, the form it should disappear. And then there is our confirmation message. So that's pretty much all for today's video guys. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to like subscribe down below and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye guys!